Reason one, my name is Reynolds, and today we are talking your first list with the Adeptus Custodes. Now, this is meant as a beginner's list for either completely new players in Warhammer 40k, or just generally new players to uh, the Adeptus Custodes. A few things I want to point out before we actually start talking about the list. First and foremost, check out the previous video about my build recommendations, as in how you build your models physically. If you already have a substantial amount of models laying around, you haven't built them yet, not sure how to build them, that video can help give you some advice on how to physically build your models. As in, should they have spears, swords and shields, yada yada, and generally just give you some advice on purchases. The second point I want to make is that, as I said, this list is meant for your first few games of Custodes. It's not a list that's gonna blow away the world and be like, holy shit, this is amazing. But it'll give you a good variety of units to try out and play, and generally just give you a decent idea of how Custodes can play. And finally, I want to say that the rule of cool as well as what you think is good matters more than what I think, as well as what the meta says is good. If you just really, really like using the Sisters of Silence with swords, known as Vigilators, if you think those girls are cool, and you just want to make a list with as many of those as possible, go ahead and do it. Warhammer 40k is a game that is very much based on either you want to play something that's meta because you want to try and win games, but it can also totally be just a casual hobby you play with your friends every once in a while, and if that is the case, then you should totally just use what you think is good or what you think is cool. With that out of the way, Let's jump into the actual list. So we're going to go through the list uh, step by step. And once again, I need to remember, I need to move my camera up here so it's not in the way of the actual list building. Right, so this is the Custodes beginner list base template, in my opinion. It consists of Trajan Valoris, a Blade Champion, and two times five Wardens. The reason I say this is the base is because in 10th edition, Wardens are really a solid just you can include them in any list and they'll probably do well. Trajan Valoris is a character unit that is very expensive, but is also very good, and he's also one of the mainstays in Custodes list ever since he came out. So even if you don't end up using him in a future lists, sometime in the future when he gets better or Custodes gets better or whatever the case is, you will be happy to have Trajan Valoris in your collection. A Blade Champion is also one of the newer models. He's very good in the metagame right now. He's a cheap character you can bring. He's also just quite different from the other characters you can build. Most characters in Custodes is actually just the normal version of the model, but with like a cape or slightly different hair or shoulder pads or something like that. Whereas the Blade Champion is actually a unique built character. And I also think that having at least one will just make you happy. That being said, if you want to run like two Blade Champions instead of Trajan Valoris, that's completely fine as well. I just think having Trajan Valoris is a really good step for any Custodes collection. And yeah, the Wardens are really good in 10th edition right now. They're very tangy. They're not as killy as some other Custodes unit, but they are still Custodes, which means they get a lot of attacks and they can still fight basically most things in melee. And then yeah, they are very tangy, which means that you can in theory just put them on an objective and feel fairly safe in them surviving for quite a while. So that is the base template I recommend for this Custodes list. Trajan Valoris, Blade Champion, 2x5 Wardens, and usually those two characters would join the two Wardens to get their ability activated, which is minus one to wound against a unit if the opponent's strength is higher than your toughness. All right, now we had the base. Moving into more units to add to the list to have some more play, we will be adding two times five custodian guards as well as two times four prosecutors. Custodian guards are like wardens in the sense that they have the same number of attacks, they have the same profile, but they are better at killing because they have some rerolls built in. They're also slightly better at shooting because once per game they can shoot twice. Overall, this simply means that the guards are maybe the kill version, whereas the wardens are the tank version. By including 2 times 5 guards, you have more flexibility in playing missions, doing secondaries, holding objectives, killing enemy units. They're overall just a good choice to include. Prosecutors, on the other hand, is mostly meant for backline holding and screening. They are the cheapest unit you can get in the Custodes Index. 10 points per model, so pretty cheap for Custodes. And they'll do a fine job of holding your home deployment objective, as well as screening out for deep strikes. That's what they do. They're not going to kill anything, really. They're not going to make a big impact on the game. 
but they'll score you some points here and there, and they'll help screen your backline. What will help you kill things is 5 Alaris followed by an Alaris Shield Captain. If Wardens are tanks and Custodian Guards are killers, then Alaris are somewhere in the middle. They are toughness 7 and 4 wounds, which makes them fairly tangy. And they have rerolls against characters, monsters and vehicles, which makes them fairly killy. They are a little bit slower than other units in the Custodies because they move 5 inches instead of 6. But they have access to an ability called the Golden Light, which allows you to teleport them once per game for free, even if they're already on the board. The Shield Captain is with them to allow you to get access to some free stratagems, as well as just giving them a little bit of a boost in combat because he gets 7 attacks, whereas the normal one gets 5 attacks. It's not a huge deal, he's mostly there to give free stratagems such as minus 1 damage, plus 1 to wound against monsters and vehicles, or even just a free CP reroll. Finally, rounding out the list, we have two squads of Witch Seekers. These are the Sisters of Silence with Flamethrowers. These girls are excellent to overwatch if, say, a swarm of small Tyranids are coming towards an objective. You can overwatch with them, do a little bit of damage, but generally what you want to be using them for is scoring some secondaries early on. They have a 6-inch scout move, which allows them to get onto the middle objective, for example, a little bit easier. If you need to score Deploy Teleport Homers or Area Denial, or maybe you just need a screen in front of some more important units, the Witch Seekers can help with that. And that is our 2000 point list. As I said, this is not going to go ahead and win you any tournaments, at least I don't think it will, but it gives you a good variety of units, it gives you a good amount of units to put on the board, for custodies anyway, and it lets you, I at least think, get a good feel for how custodies play, what they can do, what they cannot do, and yeah, generally I just think this is a really good list for you to start off with if you're new to Custodies and just want to like learn how they play, how they function, how killy are they, how tangy are they, etc, etc. So, we've talked about the list, now we need to talk about how you actually get it. So let's make a purchasing list. First and foremost, it's pretty straightforward. You want to go ahead and buy one Trajan Valoris, one Blade Champion, two Combat Patrol boxes, two Custodian Warden boxes, and two Alaris Custodian boxes. This will give you all you need for the list that I just shown you, as well as a few extra models if you want to switch things up and try some new stuff. In particular, from the list that I just shown you, you will have six Virtus Praetors, those are the Custodians on bikes, as well as four Sisters of Silence left over, which you can build as either more Prosecutors, more Witch Seekers, or even Vigilators if you'd like to try that. Speaking of which, let's talk about the build guide. As in how you should actually physically build these models that I'm recommending. Trajan and the Blade Champions, pretty straightforward. They are character models, they are single kit models. You can only build them one way, so go ahead and just build them. The Blade Champion comes with two different options for swords. Doesn't matter which one you equip them with. He can either have like one big sword or two slightly smaller swords. That's purely aesthetic, so you can build them with whatever you want. For the Custodian Guards, I recommend you build them with Spears. The Sword and Shield is viable in some ways. However, I think having 10 Custodians with Spears is a great start, because they are simply better right now. And then if you want to add more Custodian Guards and you buy another box, you can start building some Swords and Shields. I would definitely recommend that you keep the Sprue from your other Custodian Guards, so you can also build some Vexillas in the future if you wish to do so. Vexillas being the ones with the flag. On top of that, while you're building your Custodian Guards with Spears, I would take two of them and give a cape. This will be included in the actual box, so don't worry about like having to find a cape. Basically, the cape can just be used as to show that this is a Shield Captain. And in some games, you will not be using them as Shield Captains, you'll just be using them as normal Custodian Guards. No one will bat an eye. But when you do use them as Captains, you can easily point out and say, hey, that guy with the cape, he's the Captain. Next up are the Wardens. I would just build 10 of them with Spears and 2 of them with a Vexilla because that is free. So it'll have a flag in one hand and a spear in the other hand. Unfortunately, axes are really bad, but if you think axes look cool, of course build them with axes instead of spears. Next up we have the Al Alaris, which is just going to be 5 of them with spears. They don't really have any options there. Well, they, again, they have an axe, but as I said before, axes are not very good, but if you think they're cool, go ahead and build them. You could give an Alaris a Vexilla, but I don't think it's worth it. So either you can magnetize one of them to be able to swap between the uh, melee weapon or the flag. But in general, I just don't think it's worth it. Then you're going to build one Alaris as a shield captain. The only difference between the shield captain as well as the normal guys is that he gets a slightly different belt buckle and some shoulder pads. 
But once again, you can totally just differentiate him by painting him his hair differently or his cape differently. Anything that just makes him stand out for the rest of the Alaris and you should be good to go. Then you're going to be having 20 Sisters of Silence. And I recommend you just build 10 of them as Prosecutors and 10 of them as Witch Seekers. However, if you were paying attention, we're actually only using 16 out of the 20 Sisters of Silence in the list that I recommended. So you will have 4 Sisters of Silence left over. And if you want to, you could just build them as a squad of Vigilators or another squad of Prosecutors. That is completely your choice. I just recommend you build 10 as Prosecutors and 10 of Witch Seekers. And then, you know, if you have points left over in a list in the future, you can just add another model to that unit if need be. All right, so now we talked about the list, how you should build them. Now let's talk about how you actually buy them. If you are new to Warhammer 40k, you might think that the only way to get uh, Warhammer models is to buy them directly from Games Workshop, who is the owner of Warhammer. However, there are tons of local game stores out there that will sell you these models in their stores, and usually at a discount. Another great reason to buy from your local game store, even if they don't have a discount, is that you'll support an environment that, you know, actually cares about your hobby. The store lives off of you making purchases in the store, so they also want to incentivize you to go there. Maybe they have gaming tables you can use for free, or maybe they host tournaments every once in a while. Whatever the case may be, I will always, always, always recommend that you buy from a local game store if possible. Alternatively, if you're trying to save some money, you can also go to Facebook and you'll usually be able to find a Facebook group for your city, as long as you're living in like a decently sized city anyway. Just simply go to Facebook, search for Warhammer 40k and then the name of your city and there'll probably be a buy and sell group. This is great because a lot of people constantly sell out of their collection because they just bought some stuff they thought they were going to be using but they didn't want to use anyway or they have some leftover stuff they just don't use anymore because maybe they just don't play Warhammer anymore, who knows? And they're usually willing to sell that at a good discount, and you'll be able to save even more money from that. Finally, if you don't have a local game store, or you're really, really, really trying to save as much money as possible while also buying new stuff, which means not something from a Facebook user, try and find them online. If you are in Europe, I can recommend on Tabletop. I am not sponsored by these guys, but this is where I buy from when I'm not buying from Facebook, usually. First of all, they have 20% discount on all Games Workshop models, or maybe it's 15%. In any case, they have a good discount on all the models. They also ship for free in Europe. Now, you might be wondering, uh, wait, but don't I have to pay taxes and stuff because they're in Britain? Well, they're actually located in Ireland which is still a part of the European Union, which means you don't have to pay import taxes or any of that nonsense. So the price you pay on the site is the final price and nothing more than that. Another great thing about On Tabletop is that they use the British Pound, which is actually currently weaker than the European Euro. So not only do you save those 15 to 20% on the model compared to buying it from Games Workshop, you're probably also saving like 5% more because the British pound is weaker than the euro, and therefore there's an additional discount. So the list that I recommended from on Tabletop would be 313 pounds, which is roughly 350 or 360 euros which translates to a roughly 25 to 30% discount compared to buying it from Games Workshop. Which, you know, is a decent amount of money. Now, you obviously don't need to buy all of this in one go. If you are new to the hobby, just buy one box, maybe the Combat Patrol box, build up some models, paint them, try and play a Combat Patrol game, see if the game is for you. And if it is, then, you know, you can go back and pick up more stuff. All right, and that is all for this video. It's very short, it's very sweet. I'm simply giving you some advice on your first list, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Oh, and if you're in the US and you have an online shop you'd like to recommend for other US Warhammer players, feel free to leave that in the comments below as well. If you have any suggestions for what kind of Custodes content you'd like to see on the channel, I would love to hear it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.